Hi everyone, this video is sponsored by Chegg. Stick around later to learn more about the helpful science and medicine education offered within the Chegg study pack. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what colon cancer is, and then we're going to get into signs and symptoms of colon cancer, and we're going to teach students why these signs and symptoms occur. So colon cancer, or colorectal carcinoma, or colorectal cancer, is a cancer involving the large intestine and or rectum. So if we look at the gastrointestinal system, here's the esophagus going into the stomach. This leads into the small intestines, which wind around in the abdomen, eventually leading to the large intestine. There is the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, and eventually to the rectum and to the anus. So any part of the large intestine or the rectum may be involved in this cancer. So what happens is there may be a tumor or growth that may affect the right colon, which would be this area on this side, as we're looking directly on the patient. The left colon may be affected, or the rectum may be affected. And what happens is a malignant growth arises from a previous polyp. That polyp may have been developing for many years. Now, colon cancer is the fourth most common type of cancer. Most cases of colon cancer are going to be related to several risk factors we're going to talk about in a moment, but there is an estimated 5% of cases that are attributed to two genetic causes, one of them being familial adenomatous polyposis and the other one being Lynch syndrome. Colon cancer is also the most common cause of large bowel obstruction in adults, which can also lead to some other signs and symptoms we're going to talk about later on in this lesson. And there are several factors that can increase the risk for developing colon cancer. One of them is older age. This is going to be the most important risk factor. So particularly past the age of 50, so older than 50 is going to be a risk factor for developing colon cancer. But we can also see it with low fiber intake. So a chronic or long history of consuming low fiber. This can be an associated risk factor for having colon cancer. A family history, particularly if a first degree relative has had colon cancer before the age of 50, this is going to be a important risk factor to make note of. And then a history of inflammatory bowel disease, particularly ulcerative colitis, is also another risk factor for colon cancer. But the topic of this lesson is the signs and symptoms of colon cancer. Before we get into the signs and symptoms, it's important to make note of the fact that colon cancer may be asymptomatic, which means it may not present with any symptoms at all. But if it does, it can present with a variety of symptoms and complications. We're going to talk about those in the upcoming slides. So we just mentioned that colon cancer may be asymptomatic, and oftentimes, the onset of signs and symptoms of colon cancer occurs with advanced disease. One of those symptoms is going to be abdominal pain. So oftentimes abdominal pain is going to be the most common symptom that presents to the clinic. And oftentimes that abdominal pain may be caused by a partial or complete obstruction by the tumor or the growth. Or the pain may be related to invasion of the tumor into the peritoneum. That could also be a reason for that abdominal pain as well. Another very important sign of colon cancer is stool changes. So the caliber of the stool can change. And you can imagine that if there is a tumor within the large intestine, the stool has to pass by that tumor. That can change the shape of the stool. So what can happen is the shape of the stool can become very thin. It can be pencil shaped stool. The reason is, is because again, that tumor is going to be something that the stool is going to have to get around. If the tumor gets larger and larger, the stool is going to become very thin to go past that obstruction. So the stool becomes thinner, especially if the tumor is in the left colon. And that leads us into our video sponsor, Chegg. Now, a lot of science and medical topics can be very challenging and complex to learn and remember. But with the Chegg Study Pack, you can learn even more about colon cancer, including some of the basics about cancer and even more about some of the pathophysiology behind why colorectal cancer occurs. Each topic is organized in a very clear way and guides you all the way from the basics of the topic through to the more advanced information. For me personally, I've used Chegg in the past during my pre-med undergraduate studies as an additional learning resource, which was definitely helpful. I have also used the Chegg Study Pack to further complement my studies on a variety of of science and medicine topics and have found their resources very helpful. The Chegg Study Pack is particularly useful because it also helps improve your writing skills and your math skills as well. Not only does Chegg have a large library of their own educational resources, they also provide a variety of significant discounts on many different textbooks, which is incredibly helpful for students. Chegg also has many different practice tests and millions of flashcards to help with your studies as well. If you want to get access to this great resource, check out the link in the description below for $5 off the first month of Chegg Study Pack. And now back to the lesson. Some other important findings in colon cancer are bowel habit changes. Bowel habit changes are going to be more likely to occur with left-sided colon tumors. 
if it is a right-sided colon tumor, it's unlikely to cause bowel habit changes. And what happens with bowel habit changes is there's often an alternation between constipation and diarrhea. They may have had normal bowel habits throughout their entire life, and then all of a sudden they start to have issues with diarrhea, which then alternate to constipation. It can look like irritable bowel syndrome, but because the patient is oftentimes going to be older past the age of 50, this is going to be a red flag if we see these symptoms. Weight loss can also occur with some patients. So losing weight may occur in colorectal cancer. Weight loss is actually going to be one of the constitutional symptoms of many types of cancers. So the cancer and the cancer cells can lead to cancer-related or tumor-related anorexia. That can be one reason as to the weight loss, but it can also be due to the high energy demand of the cancer itself. So this may be the reason why some patients will have weight loss. And then another important constitutional symptom in colon cancer is fatigue. Fatigue is actually one of the most common symptoms of colorectal cancer. And again, this fatigue is going to be due to cancer-related changes. And like many other types of cancer, fatigue is going to be an important constitutional symptom to think about. Some other very important signs of colon cancer include bleeding. So bleeding can either be hematochesia, which is going to be a bright red blood in the stool, this is more likely going to occur with a left-sided colonic tumor. So if there's a tumor growing in the left colon, you can imagine that it may be disrupting a lot of the mucosal surfaces in the colon, leading to bleeding. So there will be bright red blood in the stool. Melina can also occur with colorectal cancer as well. Melina is going to be a black, tarry, and smelly stool. This is more likely to occur in right-sided colonic tumors if it does occur. So the reason is, is because it gives colonic bacteria more time to digest that blood. So if the tumor is on the right side of the colon, that bleeding may be a slow bleed. It allows bacteria to digest that blood, and then the blood will come out as a black and tarry smelly stool, so melina. And then with the bleeding comes anemia. So because of those blood losses from hematochesia and the melina and occult bleeding, it's important to note that bleeding may be occurring and the patient doesn't even know it. So occult bleeding, you can think of it as hidden bleeding. You don't see it. So blood losses from those sources can lead to anemia, a low red blood cell count. And the ultimate reason that this happens is because of iron deficiency. Because of that blood loss, the patient is also losing iron, and eventually that iron is not going to be replaced enough, and it's going to lead to an iron deficiency anemia. It's also important to rule out other causes that may be leading to this iron deficiency anemia, but if you see iron deficiency anemia in an older patient, it's very important to look out for colon cancer. Along with this iron deficiency anemia, we see signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia, including fatigue, pallor, shortness of breath, and some other interesting findings like pica. If you want more information, please check out my full lesson on that topic. Patients with colon cancer can also experience weakness. This may be related to anemia. A palpable or a mass that you can feel may also be found in some patients with colon cancer. So an abdominal mass may become palpable, especially with right lower quadrant masses. So if you look here, the abdomen is split into four quadrants using the belly button or the umbilicus as the midpoint. So right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, and left lower quadrant. Oftentimes, if there's a tumor in the right colon and it's in the right lower quadrant, it may be palpable. So there may be a right lower quadrant mass in some patients. There are signs and symptoms of a large bowel obstruction that can occur as well. We talked about colon cancer being the most common cause of large bowel obstruction in adults. So there can be signs and symptoms of a large bowel obstruction. And this large bowel obstruction is going to be more likely to occur with a left-sided colon tumor. So what can be noted is the following, constipation and obstipation. So constipation is going to be decreased frequency or an increased consistency of stool. We talked about that being part of the altered bowel habits that can occur with colon cancer. But you can imagine that if the tumor has grown so large that it completely blocks the lumen of the large intestine, nothing can pass it. So either very little stool or no stool at all may pass that obstruction. If it is completely obstructed, then no stool will pass. There will be a cessation of bowel movements. And then there may even be obstipation or no passing of flatus. Again, that very large tumor may be in the way causing a complete obstruction, allowing no stool or flatus to pass it. So this can occur in some patients. Nausea and vomiting can then ensue with these patients. This is going to be due to decreased gastrointestinal motility. You can imagine that if there's a big blockage in your gastrointestinal tract, eventually everything's going to back up 
and it's going to cause nausea and vomiting for the patient. Some other signs and symptoms of a large bowel obstruction include abdominal distension. This is due to increasing volume of air and gas within the gastrointestinal system from the obstruction. Again, this is going to be a complete obstruction. If no flatus can pass the obstruction, the air is going to build within the gastrointestinal tract, causing this abdominal distension. And the severity depends on the location of the obstruction. Some patients may also experience a fever, so an increase in body temperature. This may occur if there is bowel strangulation or if a perforation occurs. If there is a complete obstruction and air and gas and stool contents begin to build up within the gastrointestinal system, the bowels may begin to dilate and perforation may occur. And this is going to lead to gastrointestinal or colonic bacteria escaping and getting into the surrounding areas, into the peritoneum. This is going to cause an infection and a fever in some patients. And then there can be some signs and symptoms of rectal cancer. These include tenesmus. So tenesmus is a feeling or sensation of urge to defecate. And then there can also be a sensation of incomplete evacuation. So you can imagine that if there's a large tumor in the rectum, the patient can sense this and they may feel that there is something there, that there's an incomplete evacuation. So this can be very important to recognize as well. And then there is signs and symptoms of metastatic disease. Cancer from the colon can spread to other parts of the body. Some of these include the liver, so there may be issues with liver disease if there's enough spread of the cancer. The spread of colon cancer to the liver is through hematogenous spread via the portal vein. So again, it can cause signs and symptoms of liver disease. Lungs can also be impacted as well. This is going to be caused by hematogenous spread via the inferior vena cava. So this may lead to issues with breathing, although in some cases there may be no symptoms. And then the lymph nodes can also be impacted as well. So there can be supraclavicular lymphadenopathy. So above the clavicles, there's a lymph node. If that is swollen and palpable, this can be a sign of metastatic disease from colon cancer. This is going to be due to the fact that the colon cancer is spreading through the lymphatic system. So these are some of the more common sites of metastatic spread. And with each of these, there may be other particular signs and symptoms. So it's important to think about those as well. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.